Hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Murray, and welcome to 292 Baby. People often assume that as a pediatrician, I must be an expert on taking care of kids. And while I have a lot of training, we know that in reality, our experts are the parents taking care of the children. I always say, you know your child best, and you know your comfort level best, and that can help you decide when you need to seek care or talk to your pediatrician about something. Today, we have a really special guest. We have a mom expert. Her name is Kelly McMillan, and she's here to talk to us about her two children who both have their own unique and special health care needs. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining us here today. Sure. So I mentioned you have two children who have their own unique and different needs for health care because everybody has their own needs, but you've got a 12-year-old right. son. Tell us a little bit about, about him. Um, my son is 12 years old. Um, when he was about two and a half or three years old, we noticed that um, his speech wasn't progressing, you know, wasn't there like it should be for a normal three-year-old. Okay. Um, his pediatrician had recommended that we have him um, evaluated. Um, at Kirsch Center at Strong okay. and he was evaluated there and we received a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. Um, from that time he received uh, very intensive early intervention services almost year going to school year round. Okay. Um, his speech, he, you know, he started to gain his speech and um, now all these years later you can't ever shut him up. Um, <laughs> he's done very well, um, okay. like I said, with the help of a lot of early intervention services okay. along the way. And so that's great. So you mentioned all these years later. So a lot has changed in those years. He's Absolutely. worked really hard. He now is a full functioning member of the family, as we would expect. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you welcomed recently a baby to the family. We did, yes. Um, about a year and a half ago, um, I had a little girl and um, who was born seemingly very healthy. And at about 14 days old, I noticed that her belly um, just didn't look right. It looked big uh -huh. and kind of distended. and. Um, so I took her to see her regular pediatrician who recommended that we have her seen at Galisano um, Children's Hospital in the emergency room. Uh, and within an hour of being there, an ultrasound found a large tumor sitting on top of her left kidney. Oh my kidney. gosh, so brand new baby, two weeks old, brand and new now baby. you're being told yes. she has a tumor. Yes, uh, okay. they also could tell from the ultrasound her liver was very swollen. Come to find out it was so swollen because her cancer had already metastasized into her liver. Oh my goodness. It had metastasized into her bone marrow okay. and she was diagnosed with uh, neuroblastoma, stage four high risk. Wow. Which was okay. devastating, you know. Yeah. You don't I mean no one ever wants to think about their child having any mm -hmm. type of cancer or anything like that. But you know, in a newborn baby it was difficult to hear that. Yeah. So I have to say that the first thing kind of Right now, in the media, we're hearing so much about the measles outbreak and vaccines, and the two populations we hear a lot about are autism spectrum and then kids who can't be vaccinated sure. because they're being treated for cancer. So you have both of those things sure. kind of right in your family. We absolutely do. Um, and I think, you know, have I, I probably have a unique perspective Definitely. on vaccinations because of all of that. Um, my son, who is on the autism spectrum, um, was certainly vaccinated for all of his childhood illness, mm -hmm. you know, vaccinations, and has continued to be vaccinated through the years and is up to date with all of his vaccinations. Okay. Um, and you mentioned he certainly has not taken any steps backwards. Instead, instead he's absolutely seems to be going not. Totally no, forward, no. Left, and I, ahead. you know, I, I can't ever remember, um, you know, there being a specific indicator that he, you know, potentially quote unquote caught autism sure. after having a yeah. certain vaccination done. Okay. I, I never could see or find any type of a correlation between the two of okay. those. Um, I believe very firmly in having our kids vaccinated, um, even before I had a child, you know, with, with a very life-threatening illness like cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so with my little girl being so ill and being so mm -hmm. immunocompromised, you know, the fact it's difficult already. It's it's hard enough. You sure. worry enough about her even catching a common cold sure. when when kids are so ill like that and right. undergoing chemotherapy and radiation. And yeah. So let me just stop you for a second. You said immunocompromised, so that's a big word. Right. Basically meaning that her immune system is not working in part because of the chemotherapy and just in part because of her body's reaction to the sure. cancer. So she is really not protected like somebody her sure. age would otherwise be, and she can, in fact cannot necessarily be vaccinated. Absolutely. Okay. Um, not only you know, like you said, not only can she not be vaccinated, but during that point in time, um, she, her body had no defenses at all. You know, I mean, okay. she would, after receiving, you know, a round of chemotherapy, she would have no immune system whatsoever. So, okay. um, you know, going through all of that certainly 
uh, the slightest germ, a cold, you know, Anything. things like that can can be very serious for those kids. So, um, you know, and it's it's come to light recently. Um, this whole, you know, I think there's a huge kind of debate, a moral mm -hmm. and ethical debate going on about um, vaccinating our kids sure. and, and, and the people who choose not to do that versus the people who choose to do it. Um, you know, and I think, like you said, we've seen with a recent measles outbreak and yeah. um, it's it's scary for those of us who have children that right. are so, could be so greatly affected by that. Yeah, and now she, now at 18 months of age, is doing really, really well. She is, she's in complete remission. That's awesome. Um, she, yes, yeah. thank you. Um, but she is still what, her doctors to be considered immunocompromised. Yeah. So if you had um, been one of those families doing a Make-A-Wish trip at Disneyland, absolutely, she, her life could have been in danger. Absolutely, and yeah. and could have and could be potentially catastrophic. You know, mm -hmm. I think um, it's it's and I that's my reality every day because I've been through this with her. Sure. But I think that people who don't, you know, they don't realize how how far-reaching you know, not vaccinating a child mm -hmm. can be, that mm -hmm. it, you know, can not only affect your immediate family, sure. it can affect so many people around you. Right. Um, I we're think, all part of, we're all in this life together. Absolutely. Right? So we all have to take care of absolutely. each other and do what we can to And, and our do our parts strong. to, you know, I really, I feel very strongly about that, you know, and um, I would never want to take anyone's rights away to make their own decisions for their children. Um, but I also feel that it's very important, you know, that my little girl could potentially yeah. go to a store and not have to worry about catching something right. that's so easily preventable by giving a child a vaccine. Right, and there are diseases that we still certainly see in our community, whooping cough, flu, all of those Absolutely. types of things are out there. Absolutely, yes. Okay. So kind of wrapping things up, are there resources that you found helpful when you were kind of looking at all of this stuff? or? Did the doctors provide good information for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think it's always been kind of in the forefront, um, especially for my son, you know, growing up with him, always had good information available from his pediatrician's office on the importance of vaccinations and, you know, why that helps to keep everyone healthy and right. in our society. Um, and, and now going forward, you know, with my daughter, um, we're starting to be able to get her vaccinated. Um, but you know we're still catching up for yeah. her and um, so you know the importance of having all of that available you know t to all kids and, and to really help to prevent some of these diseases that can be so you know have such far far reaching effects on yeah. families. And I think it really sp speaks to the importance of having a good relationship with your pediatrician. Absolutely. Making sure your doctor is somebody that you feel comfortable talking with, you feel listened to, that your opinion is listened to, and that whose opinion you also value. Exactly. And I think that's a lot of it, mm -hmm. is, is finding a doctor that you really, you trust and, you know, mm -hmm. that they um, know your child mm -hmm. and, and that you know, that you trust their opinion in, in what they're saying to you, so. All right, well, I think we're certainly lucky. We have a lot of great pediatricians in this community. Absolutely. I also usually recommend for parents, if they have questions, to go to the American Academy of Pediatrics website, which is healthychildren.org. I'm thrilled that both of your children are doing so well. Thank and thank you, you so, so much, much for sharing this story with us here today. It was very private information that you show, chose to share, and so thank I really you. appreciate that. Thank you for having me again. Great, it was a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today on 292 Baby.